Now, 55 resistance committees and revolutionary bodies signed the new revolutionary charter for the establishment of the People's Authority as a political vision for the resistance committees. The resistance committees have been working for a while to unify two different charters presented by the resistance committees of Wad Madani and Khartoum. The technical committee of the charter explained in a press statement that the goals and issues raised by the resistance committees would be the basic building blocks for forming a unified body that would include all the revolutionary forces. The unification attempts came after various calls for unity amongst Sudan's opposition. Now, joining me to look at this development is Sudanese political analyst Dr. Majdaline El Hajj El Tahir, good to see you and thanks for your time as always. Now, Sudan has witnessed several upheavals as well as widespread protests against the government's high handedness. So, what promise does this charter contain? Uh, first of all, good evening and thank you for uh, inviting me. Uh, the charter is a new arena uh, by the grassroots movement. Uh, to, well, to the grassroots movement. Um, the difference between this charter and previous charters uh, from the times of independence until this particular cha uh, charter is the fact that it's a bottom-up um, approach uh, rather than a top-down approach. Uh, the previous uh, charters, documents, peace agreements, you name it, were always made between the political elite, between the leaders, rather than uh, coming uh, from the grassroots and from the movement. As such, as I said, it is a new political arena whereby uh, the grassroots movements are uh, the ones actually um, writing uh, a program, a minimum program, whereby they have uh, unified around this program. and. Um, as, uh, as such, I would say it was not uh, it's unprecedented in the Sudan. This was not involved by the political leaders, not by the army leaders, not by the rebel uh, movement leaders. And this is what Sudan needs. Uh, uh, Sudan needs the rule of the people, not the rule of the elite. So, so uh, Dr. Uh, Majdalene, uh, let me jump in here, uh, uh, Dr. Majdalene. Uh, so, uh, going forward, what should we expect by this charter? Excuse me? What should the people, what should Africans expect going by this charter? Well, this charter is the first step of many, many steps to follow. Uh, like I said, uh, the charter is started with, um, with many different resistance committees in different cities and villages and neighborhoods. They uh, each wrote their own charter, uh, months and months of um, negotiations until they finally unified under one charter which uh, was signed three days ago and followed by the press conference uh, today. However, uh, there is a lot more work to bring this charter into daily resistance movement until uh, we manage to fall the regime and to end the, 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 the coup d'etat and to place and to strip the military out of their uh, economic power and their political power and to place the military where they should be. It's not going to come tomorrow or after tomorrow. Signing the, the charter today is a great step. It's only the beginning of a long road uh, which requires patience, flexibility, unity and organization. And I think the people uh, of the Sudan and the people who were behind this charter are quite aware of the uh, of the of the road ahead. That's not a road uh, that is paved with um, is, is paved with a lot of difficulties. However, uh, it is very significant that uh, 55 resistance committees write their own. It reminds me of um, democracies during the Roman times and the, and and and. and uh, and the Greek times, because it is really written by the people, and uh, they join forces to to uh, because this is how they want the Sudan to be ruled. 
Rather right, good. Dr. Majdalene El Haj El Tahir, I'd like to thank you for your time. Thank you. You're welcome.